Good afternoon. Today I will present the main topic of my PhD project. In particular, I will talk about flexibility in Anopheles gambes and solato biting behavior in an insecticide bennet cover at village of Burkina Faso. Long-lasting insecticides with the bennets are considered by WHO among the most effective strategies in malaria vector control, and thus national mass distribution campaigns are recommended every three years in endemic countries. The rationale behind the introduction of these indoor vector control strategies is based upon the evidence that malaria vectors are nocturnal and mainly anthropophilic species, thus biting humans at night times when they are asleep inside houses. Treated by nets exerted an individual protection by mechanically avoiding mosquito human contact and a repellent pro and a collective protection by the lethal and repellent activity exerted by pyrethroid insecticides restrained in net fibers. It has been estimated that 68% of malaria cases prevented in 15 years in Africa are due to the treated by nets introduction. But despite this assess, Treated by nets effectiveness seems to be heterogeneous in sub-Saharan African countries. In fact, in some countries, despite the large bed net coverage, malaria annual incidence remains still very high. Burkina Faso, where long-lasting long insecticide treated by nets were introduced massively for the first time in 2010, is a paradigmatic country of this epidemiological situation. Since 2011, we have been monitoring ent entomological parameters in Godan, a rural village in the Plateau Central region of Burkina Faso, and through the years we observed consistently a level of mosquito infectivity sporozoite rate in the main malaria vector circulating in the village. As you can see from the table, from, from 2011 to 2015, we observed an overall sporozoite rate around 6-7% for Anopheles coluzzi and around 5-6% for Anopheles sarabiensis. In 2015, we estimated an entomological inoculation rate of 10 infected bites per person per night, which is a huge value considering the five years of 3 Bennett's implementation in the village and the entomological inoculation rates reported in literature both for Godin and the Plateau Central region before through the Bennett's introduction. Vector physiological resistance to pyrethroids, including target site, metabolic, and physical resistance, is considered as, as one of the main treats to treat the Bennett's effectiveness. Thus, in 2015, we genotyped mosquito population in Godin for the PDR resistant allele, which is one of the most widespread form of pyrethroid resistance in Africa and the only one directly detectable by molecular assays. We observed an overall allele frequency of 54%, which is uh, a value not so high to sustain alone the high level of mosquito infectivity and malaria transmission risk observed in the village. So it's evident that other entomological factors are occurring together with physiological resistance in undermining to the Bennett effectiveness in the village. According to literature, some malaria vector species can adopt behavioral avoidance strategies in order to elude the physical and insecticidal barrier of the net. In particular, behavioral avoidance consists mainly in mosquito changes in host choice, biting rhythms, and indoor outdoor biting activity. Host choice flexibility is considered a key factor sustaining residual malaria transmission despite the indoor vector control intervention. This because this kind of vectors, so vectors that can flexible change their host choice, they can feed enough upon humans to be potent malaria vectors and enough upon animals to survive, evading the insecticidal effect of the net. From the blood meal analysis of resting mosquitoes collected in 2011 in Godin, we observed a high zoophagy both for Anopheles coruzzi and Anopheles sarabiensis. This points out the evidence that in case of reduced human availability due to the net usage, both species circulating in the village can flexibly extend their host choice range, biting alternative hosts animals, in particular cow in this case, because they are more readily accessible. This evidence is quite expected for Anopheles sarabiensis, which is known to be a generalistic opportunistic species in its biting behavior, but it's quite novel for Anopheles coluzzi. First of all, because uh, uh, it is traditionally des in described in literature as a strong anthropophilic species. And secondly, because up to today, few amounts of studies have been ad addressed in investigating Anopheles coluzzi biting behavior, even because uh, 
it has been recognized recently as a true species separated from its sibling Anopheles gamnius and Sustrict. Concerning the bite rhythms, it is widely documented that across Africa, the timing of mosquito biting activity coincides with the human sleeping patterns, with a typical biting peak occurring between midnight and early morning, and thus represent a far important determinant of vector population vulnerability to the treated by nets. Nevertheless, in response to treated by net usage, some non vector species can flexibly adjust the nocturnal biting activity by feeding at times when humans are more readily accessible, such as dusk and down. From mosquito human landing collections conducted in 2015 and 2019 in Godan, we observed an altered biting time diverted toward the roughly homogeneous biting activity, meaning no major differences in the median number of mosquitoes collected by human volunteers performing the landing collection in a large time window between 10 in the evening to 6 in the morning. According to the theoretical prediction, the lack of the typical bearing peak in the middle of the night is indicative of a dynamic situation in which the selective pressure exerted by three band nets has altered the typical bearing patterns but has not been yet sufficient to trigger to a strong shift toward earlier or later bearing time. Anyway, the observed changes in mosquito bearing activity in Godin could enhance mosquito probability in encountering an unprotected human host since not yet sleeping under the net. Concerning the indoor-outdoor biting activity, it's important to note that anthropophagy is the major driver of host-seeking mosquito behavior. In fact, several studies conducted before through the Bennett's introduction didn't observe any mosquitoes' preferences in indoor or outdoor biting activity. And that is consistent with what we observed by mosquito human landing collections conducted in 2015 and 2019 in Godin, when in the human volunteers performed the landing collections, both outdoors and indoors where no net were present inside houses at the moment of the sampling because they were removed for the sampling purpose. As you can see from this tube box plot, both in 2015 and 2019 in Godin, we didn't observe any differences between indoor and outdoor collection when host is readily accessible and not protected by the net. Instead, when a net with a good repellent effect is present inside houses, mosquitoes are forced in biting outdoors, as we observed by BG trap collections conducted in 2019 in Godin, uh, when a BG trap, a trap for seeking mosquitoes, were placed outdoors and indoors just next to a man sleeping under a new recently distributed net brand. As you can see for Anopheles sarabiensis and Anopheles coluzzi, we didn't observe, we observed a higher outdoor biting activity, a significant higher outdoor biting activity. But this tendency wasn't observed by the same sampling protocol in 2011, when a low repellent net brand was in use at that time in the village. As you can see for Anopheles coluzzi, the early species for which we have a good amount of data by BG trap collections, in 2011, we didn't observe any significant differences between indoor and outdoor collections. Finally, it's worth reasoning on the fact that increasing mosquito outdoor biting activity could be indicative of a good repellent effect exerted by the nets. But it's important to evaluate the impact of this repellency on residual malaria transmission and population dynamics. According to literature, a good repellent effect needs to be offset by a higher lethal activity exerted by pyrethroids insecticides in order to avoid that plastic species circulating in the area could maintain a high bearing pressure outdoors on unprotected human hosts. Moreover, there are evidences that where through the bennets are effective, such as in some parts of East Africa, the most flexible species circulating could be favored and outnumbering the less responsive one, thus continuing to sustain residual malaria transmission because it is a species not easy targetable by the net usage. In 2019 in Godin, we observed for the first time a drop in the sporozoite rate to a value of 1.7%, and although this data is partial and need to be confirmed, it, it seems to be consistent with the introduction of a new net brand with a good repellent effect. 
Moreover, from a retrospective overview of our longitudinal data, from 2015, a change in mosquito species dominance seems to occur, with uh, Anopheles um, arabiensis here reported in blue, overcoming the former abundant Anopheles coluzzi here reported in orange. So the new recently distributed net might have impact on or affected um, the population dynamic. Anyway, future studies will confirm if it, if it is a stable or a, circumstan a circumstantial phenomenon. In conclusion, the entomological frameworks observed for malaria vectors circulating in Godin is explicative of vector capacity in eluding indoor vector control strategies, mainly due to their behavioral flexibility. So it's important when implementing control interventions to take into account not only the physiological resistance, but even the heterogeneity of vector species circulating and their relative behavioral traits. I will thank my PhD supervisor, Dr. Marco Pombi and Professor Alessandra Della Torre and all the other professors involved in this PhD project. And you all for your attention.